the big story this morning really is auto once again because of the slew of decisions and you have a new version of uh, fame it's called pm e drive scheme now and it's um, a sort of um, uh, encouragement to electric vehicles now the cabinet has launched um, or the cabinet announced the cleared the pm e drive scheme allocating 10900 crore rupees over two years to boost ev usage this will support electric two wheelers three wheelers e buses and establish numerous charging stations let's listen in <coughs> to INB minister ashwini vaishnav who talked about it aaj pm e drive scheme launch hui hai इसमें टू व्हीलर्स थ्री व्हीलर्स ट्रक्स और एम्बुलेंसेस और ई बसेस को कवर किया जाएगा इसमें एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट ध्यान रखा गया है कि एम्बुलेंस के केस में हाइब्रिड एम्बुलेंस को सपोर्ट करेंगे बिकॉज एब्सोल्यूटली हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योरिटी चाहिए होती है एम्बुलेंस के मैटर्स में ट्रक के मामले में जो अगर हम देखें व्हीकल्स में जो पोल्यूशन होता है उसमें मैक्सिमम कंट्रीब्यूशन ट्रकिंग से होता है इसीलिए इस बार ट्रक्स को भी इसमें लिया गया है ई ई ड्राइव प्रोग्राम में और ट्रकिंग में कई अच्छी टेक्नोलॉजीज डेवलप हुई हैं उनको इस कार्यक्रम में इंक्लूड किया गया है और साथ ही साथ बहुत बड़ा फोकस किया गया है कि चार्जिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को देश भर में डेवलप किया जाए इसके लिए 88,500 साइट्स को सपोर्ट करने के लिए 100 परसेंट सपोर्ट होगा वो फैसिलिटी इसमें दी गई है और साथियों इसमें ये ध्यान रखना है कि ये जो सपोर्ट है ई ड्राइव का दिस सपोर्ट इज ओवर एंड अबव दी पी एल आई कम्पोनेंट एंड दी जी एस टी रिलीफ विच इज ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल टू दी ईवी सेगमेंट ईवी सेक्टर चार्जिंग इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर को देश भर में डेवलप किया जाए इसके लिए 88,500 साइट्स को सपोर्ट करने के लिए 100 परसेंट सपोर्ट होगा वो फैसिलिटी इसमें दी गई है और साथियों इसमें यह ध्यान रखना है कि ये जो सपोर्ट है ई ड्राइव का दिस सपोर्ट इज ओवर एंड अबव दी पी एल आई कंपोनेंट एंड दी जी एस टी रिलीफ विच इज ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल टू दी EV segment, EV sector. This entire program will be a big uh, help in having sustainable growth and making sure that our country progresses very rapidly on the electrical vehicle movement. Okay, so uh, Tushar is joining us now, and uh, he's been uh, covering, of course, uh, all the details on the new scheme. the pm e drive uh, remember it is the next iteration after fame 1 and fame 2 and this is something tushar you in fact reported on the 2nd of september on ndtv profit when you talked about a new version of this scheme coming up uh, around mid september and that's exactly what's happened now tell us what's different what is uh, better and what is not as good in the third version of the fame scheme which is now called uh, the pm e seva or the pm e drive scheme Yeah hi. Yeah so it's called the PM e drive and the two things that actually stand out for this particular scheme is the focus on building charging infrastructure and the lack of any support for electric cars. Uh but if you talk about electric cars they already get a support about uh, when they are Which are taxed at about five percent GST, uh, it is respect as compared to forty three percent or forty eight percent for uh, passenger vehicles in general. Uh, the big focus here is the charging infrastructure space. Uh, the minister pointed out that it was eighty eight thousand five hundred points that they will cover. Uh, remember, two thousand crore rupees has been separately allocated for setting up twenty two thousand one hundred fast chargers for electric two wheelers, three wheelers, buses, uh, as well trucks, etc., as well as electric cars. Uh, the separate allocation has been for uh, the ambulances which was not present in fame 2 in terms of outlay also while the outlay is very similar fame 2 had a outlay of 11500 crore rupees it apm e drive has 10900 crore rupees but the duration is much shorter this time fame 2 was five, for about 5 years and this one is about for for, for about 2 years uh fame 2 covered uh, or 
provided subsidy to 13.21 lakh uh, EVs. About a million of those were two-wheelers. This uh, particular scheme, the PME drive, wants to cover about 24.7 lakh to electric two-wheelers, 3.16 lakh electric three-wheelers, and 14,000 odd buses. Now, the 14,000 odd buses was also crucial because they, they get a separate allocation of 4,391 crore rupees which will go to public transport agencies to procure these 14,000 odd buses. Uh, FAME 1, which was the first iteration, the first EV scheme that India f received, was actually lackluster. It was launched in 2015, lasted till, to, till uh, end of uh, FI20, March 31st, 20, 2019. Uh, the outlay was about 750-odd crores, but the outgo or the disbursal of the subsidy was about 550 crores. So not a big success. Uh, we also covered just about uh, uh, 2.78 lakh EVs at that point of time and only 465 buses. So a significant jump, uh, we can say, uh, towards sustainable mobility because, remember, charging infrastructure is the key bottleneck for adoption of electric vehicles in India. So if that's solved, everything grows. So that's that's uh, from Coming the policy, up. right, right, Tushar, uh, and that's from the policy perspective, of course, uh, where you have a new iteration of this passenger vehicles not really included, but a big boost for two wheelers as well as public utility, right? That's mm. the focus. So uh, Puni joining in actually on what is the kind of uh, impact we could see from a stock perspective this morning? Yes, Puni. Uh, hi, good morning. So, yeah, you know, uh, Tushar did highlight the scheme about, you know, the, what's the outlay and everything on that part. But there are certain aspects also within the scheme that are, you know, slightly negative going forward as well. So, while th there are two distinctions that is very important, 3,690 crores, which is the allocation for electric two-wheelers, three-wheelers and buses, that is on one aspect. The 4,300 crores that Tushar highlighted, that will be given to public, uh, the PTUs or who those guys who will actually procure those buses. So, that is not involved on the demand side of the incentive so if you go and purchase the car you will get those part of the 3600 incentive but the 4300 will go to these government bodies and the public stus basically who procure these buses that's one of the major difference the other aspects is within uh, some you know they've introduced some provisions such as the e-voucher now uh, that is you know uh, will be essential for oems to claim reimbursement but of course that that's one positive coming out of this because there was some delay and some you know leakage also in the last scene that has been plugged now with this e voucher scheme uh, essentially going forward they've also al they will be allocating buses uh, you know to uh, but the first preference that they've mentioned here is to uh, is to those cities that will prefer to scrap the old buses now don't know how much time it will take into this whole process because earlier you could just procure the buses as part from CESL but that now that new this new provision has been introduced it might be slightly negative because it might take a lot more time to scrap the old ones get the new ones and the whole process the other thing I just wanted to address uh, that electric trucks also incentives have been given uh, but uh, again it will also involve scrapping of the old vehicles from Morth so that's another thing that scrapping has been introduced for electric trucks uh, as well as you know for uh, allocating for buses as well so that's I think slightly negative according to me it might take a lot of time which has been one of the key issues the other aspect might be negative for electric cars because that provision has gone now there's no incentives that you will get for purchasing an electric car now so Tata Motors Mahindra and Mahindra and Maruti might be impacted because of that on the electric two-wheeler scheme of course we have positives such as Ola, Bajaj, Auto, TVS Motors and Hero uh, specifically we will see the top three guys being benefited while on the, on the other side also on the e-buses I think it's going to be a big question mark for likes of Ashok Leyland, Tata Motors as well as VECV, JBM Auto, Electra and the reason I say this is because uh, the payment mechanism that we addressed last week it has been, you know, there is a government guarantee now, but essentially it's the same, that you will, they will have to operationalize the buses for the next 12 years. It's not an outright purchase. So uh, the companies have highlighted that this is slightly bigger of an issue because they don't want to operate the buses for 12 years. They just want to sell the buses together and, and get done with it, but that, that has not changed. While the government has introduced a payment mechanism that in case these, you know, in case the government bodies are not able to pay, uh, the government of India will pay, but that, that's, uh, that's slightly negative again. So they still need to operationalize the e-buses. So we will see that participation from someone like a VECV specifically, because they have been absent from these, uh, you know, tenders specifically. So some more clarification would have been better, but I think e-two-wheelers will be the most benefited. E-buses still, you know, somewhat in the in dicey zone, and you know, passenger cars have been negatively impacted. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Thanks for that. Uh